Today, we're gonna talk about the camera experience off of the Nothing 2 phone. And this is my first Nothing phone, so I have no prior experience with the Nothing 1 phone. But just looking at the specs, there are some differences. And just to let you know, all the samples you'll be seeing is straight from the Nothing 2 phone, unedited. So, going into the camera app and the whole camera user experience is very simple. You get all the standard modes as you would expect from most phones, and there is an expert mode where you have manual controls and you can shoot raw photos. I'm a fan of the tap to change settings on top of the screen because I think it's just so much faster than opening up another menu. For example, the timer. I can quickly tap twice to get to 10 seconds versus other phones out there where you would have to tap the timer, then you'll see the animation of showing off 3 seconds, 10 seconds, and then you choose the timer setting. So I just think it's so much faster being able to tap and quickly change it to whatever you want. I know this could be a slight learning curve, but once you know the rotation of the settings, you can quickly tap without thinking. And if you need to dive into more settings, just easily swipe down while swiping left and right changes to the other camera modes. This year, for the main camera, nothing is going with a sensor that's mostly in the mid-tier phones versus nothing one. That camera sensor is more on flagship phones. But just looking at these camera samples from Nothing 2, they look great. Most phones nowadays perform very well during daytime and it all comes down to personal preference and if you like the colors coming out of it. The HDR is also consistently good as well. Most of these pictures are well exposed and if you think it's too bright, then you can always lower the brightness. For the ultra wide, it's the same sensor so you probably won't notice any drastic changes from Nothing 1. And the selfie camera is now at 32 megapixels which has been great and looks pretty natural. Obviously, there is no telephoto lens so that might be a struggle for certain people, like concert goers, where they need to zoom beyond 10x since they are so far back from the stage. But you do have a quick button to zoom right into 2x. And usually around 2 to 5x is a common range for most occasions when you're out and about. Zooming into that 2x does decently well, but once you're at max range, which is 10x, that's when the quality can degrade pretty hard, like pretty much every phone out there. Taking low light photos does pretty well too, and usually around nighttime, I will notice some huge differences between the experience from daytime. The biggest one is the performance. Is it going to be as snappy as it will be during the daytime? No, but I did not notice any huge lag or process buffering. And for video, it does perform great during the daytime, especially using the wide camera. Of course, if you're planning to vlog, using the ultra wide lens, make sure that you are in frame. But I do like to see that natural background blur from using the main camera. Now, this is such a small detail that I haven't really experienced on any other phone is the record light. This red light blinks at the back of the phone, letting you know that you are recording. So it's like a little nice visual gesture to know that you are recording all the time without looking at the screen because you really can't sense this on the other side. Or if you are recording a friend, they know that you're recording already so you don't have to yell out action or go. But if you don't want to see the blinking light, you can always turn it off. While we are on this vlogging topic, the glyph light is also useful because it gives you that extra light when you are in dark places. You can use a flash like any other phone, but you do get that really harsh light on your face which is really not good and if you're looking at the screen or at the camera, the flash is right next to your lens so you look like you're always squinting all the time. But you won't have any of these problems using the glyph light since you do get a softer look and it's not too blinding when you're looking at these lights. Another function that this phone takes advantage of is the timer. I know some phones do this with their flash but not every phone does it. So on a Nothing 2 phone, you can see the blinking lights coming out of the glyph lights around the lens. On top of that, the glyph lights are also useful outside of the camera experience. Like when you get a notification, it lights up. When you charge, there is a progress bar. When you have a timer on, you can see the light strip slowly decreasing and even using the volume keys. To top it all off, you can customize your own ringtone and your own light pattern. There are only a certain amount out right now, but in the future updates, there will be more with other artists or whatever collabs nothing is working with. To me, I think the Nothing 2 offers a complete experience as a phone. The Nothing OS 2.0 theme is a huge part of that reason and it's consistent throughout. The little details like the apps you download and even the recording time is themed. The phone starts at $599 and it goes up from there depending on how much storage and RAM you want. The back of the phone not only looks unique, but it is functional. The camera is a great performer from day to night and I feel like anyone can pick it up and start using it. Having that glyph light on the back makes it so useful for shooting video and you don't need to bring a separate light with you. Having the two camera lenses on the back is pretty great for most occasions and if you know you need that telephoto lens, then you might have to look somewhere else. 
that is the only major concern I can think of on the camera side of things. But for $600, I feel like you're not only getting a phone, but a phone that catches eyes while being functional. This is just me, but I do feel more updated or I look more tech savvy than the average person on the street. The Nothing 2 phone is something I would recommend to anyone that wants a good looking phone that's easy to use. In the end, I think you are getting a lot of value for this price. Let me know your thoughts about the Nothing 2 phone and would you think it's enough to switch over from the big brand name phones? Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.